Welcome back. Uh, in this section, I'm going to cover uh, some of the basic functions in using Excel. Those will be some of the functions such as adding a bunch of numbers, finding the maximum number, the average, counting a bunch of numbers, and, th and subtracting and multiplying and so on. Some of those basic arithmetic concepts that you have learned, those come in very handy in here in Excel and you'll use them constantly as you plan on using Excel. So let's get started. Uh, basically uh, the function, you should say well what where are the functions? How many of them are there? So if you click here on the tab formulas and you click on insert functions you'll see a listing of all the functions if you choose this drop down here. And there are hundreds and hundreds of those functions will not cover anywhere close to uh, most of them. We'll actually just touch some of the basic stuff here in Excel because basically Excel is endless in what you can learn and what you can do with it. So for example, the sum function that we were talking about and using earlier, it is listed somewhere in here. And there it is. For example, sum, it adds all the numbers in a range. You can add those numbers like number one, comma, number two, comma, number three, but if you have a long range, then you'd use the colon to determine the starting point and the end point and everything in between. So that's pretty much the stuff on the concept and the function. So it's the idea here is that it's a lot of them, it's hundreds of them, and uh, to understand them better, you can click right here under the insert function and then also if you click on help on this function Microsoft will bring up the help menu or the help guides on how to use this function with examples and things of that nature. Keep in mind as well that all these functions work the same across any other types of spreadsheet software out there. So there it gives you the example. So let's go back now let's say we want to find the maximum number, the highest number in this range. So what we do is, we remember that the all formulas start with an equal sign, so we type equal, and then we want to uh, get the maximum number. So you'd say, well how do I know what the function for maximum is? You could either click on insert function here under formulas and then insert function, or you could just take a guess at it and do just max. Uh, max for example. And notice Excel gives you a listing of close matches to it. So now we'll choose for example max and it tells you that it returns the largest value in a set of values. So if we choose max here and then we want the range to be these guys over here, this range. And then hit enter. So we could have typed that C5 colon C13 and notice the highest number here is the number 500. If I change one of those numbers to 788 and hit enter, notice this will be updated automatically as well. All of these other references as well to it. So for example, this got changed, this number here and that and also the total back here. Now, if I wanted to find the minimum, the lowest number, then you do the same thing. So you do equal and then you try, for example, minimum, M-I-N, and notice the first one that gets recommended from Microsoft is M-I-N. So those actually you kind of have to remember them. It works the same in OpenOffice and the other applications as well. So we choose M-I-N, notice it's doing the parentheses, and then we select the range, we want to find the lowest number in this range. Then hit enter, and the lowest number is number 13. Now you'd say, what about the average? What's the average of all these numbers here? So for the average, you just uh, do again equal sign and then you type average or you start typing part of the average. Notice it's not a short way like AVG, so in this case it is the whole word. It gives you the average or the arithmetic mean of its arguments or of the numbers that are included in the range. For example, this would be the range right here. Then we hit enter and that is the average. Now, what about counting them? 
So you do the equal sign, count. By the way, for any of those, instead of doing them manually, you could go to the Home tab. So let's go back here under the Home tab. And there is this section right here under the Editing option. And you choose drop down here, and you choose count numbers. That's another function. But I'd like to have you use it manually to understand the concept behind it, because those menus, again, could change. So if we click on count numbers here, notice it's going to try to count these numbers automatically right here. But we're not interested in those. We are interested in those from 5 through 13, C5 through C13. We select the new range, hit enter, and notice there are nine numbers included in there, nine records. So instead of you counting those manually, you'd count them using a formula. So now the question is, how can I have these, instead of me spending all afternoon or day entering these formulas for the other ranges, and you could have hundreds of those, how can I replicate these numbers so that they actually, or those formulas here, how can I replicate those formulas so that what I have in this here, it would also be the same on these other columns. So the way to do that, if you remember before, when we did this, we just dragged it to the right. So we could simply do this first one. Notice this is the formula up here. We could drag it to the right. And it works. Now, by the way, anytime you drag this stuff to the right, you need to verify that the correct uh, stuff is being calculated, the correct formula. So if you click on the formula bar up here, Notice it selects, it tells you in blue what's being selected. So that's one of the ways. So you can click on it, drag it to the right. Now another way to do this easier is select the whole range here, a whole bunch of stuff, and then click on the bottom right, and then drag it to the right. And now notice it does it for all the records in the spreadsheet, or in that range that we are picking. So what's happening is, as you drag it to the right, notice on the first one, it's C5 through C13. When we click on the next one, it's D5 through D13. So it's shifting one over in a sequence, very similar to like the days of the week that we tried earlier, and the months of the year, and so on. So that's relative referencing. So that's um, some of the basic uh, functions here that we learned so far is to add a bunch of numbers. So to find the total for a bunch of numbers or the sum of, of the total num uh, bunch of numbers. To find the highest number, maximum, minimum number, the lowest number, the average, and counting. So it's just five functions so far. Now, a lot of times in business you'll also do um, other mathematical calculations such as addition, subtracting numbers, multiplying a bunch of numbers, and then dividing. So addition in Excel, it's represented usually uh, by using the sum uh, function, sum or the plus sign. So you could have a bunch of a uh, couple numbers within parentheses and you use a plus between those two references. And we tried the, so I would recommend that you use the sum function for that, just like we did over here. Subtraction, it's usually uh, just the minus sign on the keyboard. Multiplication, it's um, the asterisk, the shift and seven in a Windows PC. Actually, it's shift and number eight in a Windows PC. And then dividing, it's by a slash, represented by just simply typing a slash here. So, in our case, here we have an, another example. Let's say that we have these employees. This is their pay. They, they have to pay different deductions. Deduction number one, deductions number two. So now we want to calculate the total of those deductions. So we have uh, deduction one and deduction two, and that will give us the total of these deductions. So what we do here is we press the equal sign, and then we put sum open parentheses, and then just pick those two cells. Hit enter, and it is $289, for example. Now, in this case, you'd say, well, why didn't I do the equal sign or the plus sign here? 
The reason why you don't want to do the plus sign is because at some point between deduction one and deduction two, you might insert a new column, and then whatever that new column that you insert is going to be part of your new range. So now what you do is, notice there is also a warning here that says the formula in this cell refers to a range that is additional adjacent to it. So it's basically saying, hey, you might have forgotten to include this one over here. But we're not interested in that because it's we're doing something else at this point. We just want to add the deductions. So now, if you wanted to add all of these deductions together, all you do is you use the autofill feature. And actually, that's not adding them together. It's basically uh, replicating that same formula in the other cells. So again, I clicked on it and I dragged it down. And notice those have been represented. So that for this guy that is making $9,000 uh, a month, he has to pay $693 in deductions. Now, if we wanted to figure out what his net pay is, what we would do here is that um, we need to basically take his gross pay minus the deductions. So what we do in this case is the equal sign, and then we choose the payment minus the deductions and then we hit enter so again what we did equal sign the first number first value the total pay minus the deductions and then we can replicate this using the autofill feature so the net pay for bill is instead of getting nine thousand dollars he's actually getting only $8,375. So now what we'll do is let's say we want to figure out the annual income for him or for any of those employees. So what we do is uh, let's say we want to figure out the annual uh, net pay. Usually it's the gross pay that you calculate but let's say for now we want to include the, the annual one. So the annual would be the monthly times 12. So the way you put that in a formula is the equal sign, this number, the net pay, times 12. Usually it's not recommended that you, you encode in a formula actual numbers. However, for this is the month of the year, so this is a round number, and it's most likely not going to change. But usually, keep in mind, you reference something. So it would be very similar to like saying annual. And then in another cell here you say it's going to be 12. So what you do in this case, instead of 12, you change that to be this value, L20. And if I hit enter, I still get the same value. So now let's drag this down so using the autofill feature. And I'll actually explain this later why this, this did not work. So let's go back. I'll explain this on the absolute references in a little bit. So now it works. And the reason is because we are using an absolute reference. We are referring to this value here and I'll explain that shortly. So um, the other thing that you can do here is uh, let's go back to the values the way they were. So instead of using the reference we'll use just 12 for simplicity and not being confused so here is uh, G12 that'll be annual net income G23 times 12 drag this down and that's the net income for everyone now let's get rid of these now let's say you want, we wanted to divide this per week, so pay per week, so we can learn about division. So now the pay per week, remember this is the total for, or for the annual, and we want to divide that for each week. So a year has 52 weeks. So what we do here is we press the equal sign, the number divided, so the annual income divided by 52, and then we hit enter. And the same, we can drag this down. And then the last one, Bill Allen, since he's making $90,000 or 100, 
thousand dollars a year he is making around two thousand dollars a month or actually per week here so that's the division now keep in mind for multiplication like we did here and division and also subtraction notice there is no function that you need to include because for these other guys here for these other references here if you remember we had to include the actual function the max and so on for uh, for um, subtraction multiplication and dividing you don't need to use those and again keep in mind that subtraction is the minus sign multiplication the asterisk and dividing is the slash